Hi and welcome to this introductory lecture on the skeletal system where we will look at the basic bone structure and function. First off, most people think of the skeleton as just a supporting framework when in fact it is not. It is a lot more. It is comprised of bones which are in fact organs. So that means that they are dynamic living tissues. It does interact with all other organ systems and it is continually in the process of rebuilding and remodeling itself. Now the components of the skeletal system you think of the bones as being the first but you can also think of cartilage and ligaments where the ligaments are attaching bone to bone and some other supportive connective tissues. When you are looking at the bones they are the primary organs of the system they are what forms that rigid framework of the body and they do perform a lot of other functions which we will touch on right at the end of this lecture. Now as you look at bones there are two main types. There is the compact bone and this is the bone that provides a lot of the strength in the skeletal system. It is a relatively dense connective tissue and it is approximately 80% of bone mass. In addition we also have spongy bone that is located internally or deep to the compact bone. It appears porous. This is where we find the bone marrow and it is approximately 20 percent of bone mass. Now as you look at cartilage it is a semi-rigid connective tissue that is that it is more flexible or compressible than bone. The types of cartilage, the base cartilage is hyaline cartilage. You can find it in attaching ribs to the sternum. It is the articular cartilage which is at the ends of some bones. You find that cartilage within growth plates or the epiphyseal plates and bones and it also s serves as the base model for the formation of most bones. Not all but most. In addition to hyaline we also have fibrocartilage. Now the difference between hyaline and fibro is that the fibrocartilage has a lot of fibers in it to give added strength. It is a weight bearing cartilage that withstands compression. You find those in the intervertebral discs, in the pubic symphysis, and the cartilage pads of the knees or those places that are under a lot of stress. Ligaments anchor bone to bone and as you look at tendons they anchor muscle to bone. Here is a figure showing the skeletal system as well as a picture of a long bone in a child. The cartilage is highlighted so you can see all the places that you find either hyaline cartilage at the ends of long bones, at the sternum, or you see fibrocartilage in the intervertebral discs pubic symphysis and knees. As you look at the long bone of a child, which is here, you'll find the cartilage in the epiphyseal plate, more commonly called in layman's terms the growth plate. Now that we understand some of the basic components of the skeletal system, let's look at some of its general functions. Most will be able to describe support and protection as being the number one function as well as movements. It does however do more such as hemopoiesis which is the formation of blood cells and also the storage of mineral and energy reserves. When you look at the support and protection function of bones it is a structural support that provides a framework for the body. It does protect many delicate tissues such as the heart and lungs with the rib cage, the brain from the skull or cranial bones, the spinal cord with the vertebrae, and the pelvis looking at the urinary and reproductive organs. As you look at movement, the bones serve as the attachment sites for the skeletal muscle, soft tissues, and some organs. The bones function as a system of levers, so as the muscle pulls on the lever, it helps move the organism. 
You can also alter direction and magnitude of forces generated by the muscles because of the bones themselves. That allows for the great range of motion that we see within organisms. When you look at hemopoiesis, as I mentioned, that's the process of blood cell production. It does occur in the red bone marrow of spongy bone at the ends of long bones, especially. And it contains stem cells that form the blood cells, RBCs and WBCs, and platelets. When you look at the storage of mineral and energy reserves, most of the calcium and phosphate is stored within bones and then released into the blood as it is needed. It is a negative feedback mechanism. So the question becomes, what are some things that we might need calcium for? Some big ones are muscle contraction, including skeletal muscles and cardiac muscle. Blood clotting, without calcium, blood does not clot either through the extrinsic or intrinsic pathway. And nerve impulse transmission. In addition to calcium, phosphate is also stored. And the question becomes, what do we use it for? It is used primarily for ATP utilization, that is to make adenosine triphosphate, and it, be, and it can be used in the plasma membrane as well. Kinases can use it to phosphorylate enzymes to turn them on or off, let's say. And finally, lipids are stored in the yellow bone marrow. Yellow bone marrow is inactive bone marrow um, that is composed primarily of fat. It is found in the shafts of some adult bones in something called the medullary cavity.